Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. And today we're so excited about our guest, Joan Vassos from The Golden Bachelorette. Joan has captured our hearts on this season of the show so far, and her journey to find love later in life is so relatable to so many people. So we're going to chat to her about the whole groundbreaking season and her journey and, of course, her thoughts on finding love at any age. So Joan is joining us virtually. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Have you been watching yourself? And and is it as you expected when you were going through the filming process? So I'm kind of like watching myself, but I feel like I know what I did. I'm actually really enjoying being able to watch the season because I see the guys interaction, which I don't see because they're like in the mansion and I don't right. really see them together unless we're on a group date. So that's the part that is like really exciting and fun for me to watch. Like, you know, I heard from them, like how much they bonded and how it was like kind of like therapy for them and what good friends they become. But I'm finally like actually getting to see the interaction. It must be a little difficult because, you know, you're you're certainly younger than I, but but you've had a, a prior life and a, and a happy marriage and you have a family. So is this a different kind of, this is a different kind of finding a relationship. You know, you know, you're not having children, I don't think. Um, you're trying to go <laughs> into the, <laughs> into the golden years with someone you're having, have fun with. Is it, is it strange to do? I mean, how difficult is it? Because I have a lot of friends going through it now. It's it's very different. So it's certainly very different from like the first process when I found right. John or when I was looking for a husband because I was looking for somebody to, you know, start a family with and to start a life with and, mm -hmm. you know, build your first house and do all those things. And now I, like I have a life. I've, I've built it already. I like it. And right. I want to be with somebody who like likes their life. So you have to figure it's a totally different thing. You have to figure out how do you merge lives or how do you like invite them into your life and see how they fit and how do you fit into their life? So it's, it's like, it is really different. Um, and actually a little harder to find somebody, honestly, the, the pool of people is a lot smaller when right. you're in your twenties and thirties. I oh, feel like, and I'm like, you know, have been dating in New York in my 20s the last few years. And we complain mm -hmm. how hard it is <laughs> as is. And I wonder, though, if people kind of mature. So maybe that makes things a little bit easier because I feel like the men at least understand what it's like to have a successful relationship at some point. I, I think you're but right. I think it's hard in a way. Joan has a more difficult situation because she's got family and everybody has to fit into a into a good circle together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you're both right on both accounts. Like it's a little easier because the men kind of have an emotional intelligence. They, you know, they kind of know what they want in life. Right. So you're either you fit that idea or you don't. And they're not mm -hmm. like trying to figure out what they want in life. They kind of know it and they chances are already have it and have built it. Um, but once again, there aren't as many people and you do have to really consider like what you like out of your life and what you're not willing to give up. Um, in a relationship with somebody. So you're always going to be, have some kind of sacrifice, but you know, mm -hmm. like what part, like I'm not going to move from Maryland. I made that perfectly clear mm -hmm. from day one, actually, even before we started filming, mm -hmm. I said, I'm not leaving Maryland. So um, if someone wants to be, be with me, they have to know that I don't expect them to move and be with me. And I don't, I don't want somebody who expects me to move and be where they live. Um, I think that's too much to give up. It's too much to ask somebody to do. So they have to, like realize it's going to take some effort in another way by traveling or by arranging when you're going to see each other. It, it requires some work, but too I hard. think it's too much to ask people to leave their lives that they've spent their you know, like 60 years building. Mm -hmm. Now, are you located in your life in, in California or are you in, in the, Maryland? Oh, in Maryland. So whatever yeah, it is, you're so staying in Maryland. I'm staying in Maryland. You know, I, I have the ability to travel now. I, um, and you know, I have my family there I have my grandchildren there. I want right. to be able to see them whenever I want. I will never not have a house there, but I, you know, I can travel. I can go uh -huh. and you know, spend a couple of weeks. I can spend a month. I can, you know, spend time someplace else, but my home base is going to be Maryland. Now the program is now finished, I guess, technically it's, it's not the finished. Filming. The filming, it's not finished for us to watch, but it's, yeah. so have you, I, I don't even know if I should ask this question. Did you find love? <laughs> Everybody asked that question, Grandma. Um, so, I, you know, that's kind of an interesting question. I found a lot of love in that house. I mean, the men are like lovely people. I wish I could expand on like whether I found a single love more, but I'm not allowed to. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I also really want you guys to watch the show because I think, like, sure. as far as me and spoilers, I never, like, want to know the spoilers because I love watching to see how the story unfolds. So, um, yeah. But when you were on The Golden Bachelor, how badly did you want a spoiler? Because it was, like, your friends on the season at that point. Didn't you want to know who, like, got engaged? Yeah, so they're very different because, like like you said, they're my friends. And so I... Like I had an idea. I thought I knew maybe who he was going to pick. And mm-hmm. so I certainly did. And I knew who ended up, you know, at exotic. So I was down to like the last two or three. Yeah. Um, so I did, like, yeah, I did want to know. I, I've said like my curiosity got the best of me on that one. But generally right. I love coming home and having that one night of the week where I get to come and see like how it's unfolding and what's happening. And I love having the conversation like with my friends after an episode or, you know, sometimes I'll have friends For over sure. and drink wine. And- talk about it and like give our predictions. I love that whole process of it. Yeah. I think there's a reason the bachelor franchise is something that there's a new episode every week and it's not all dropped at once. And then you're binging it because it creates that Mm -hmm. fandom and bachelor nation. And we're all like at the edge of our seats and it really creates like stars out of it, which I, I feel like you've definitely become. And so I had a question. So you have, you told the guys, I don't remember if it was the last episode or the one before that, You might not ever be 100% open to love, maybe 90%, obviously, because of John. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, you know, it's, it was really hard to like verbalize the way I was feeling because I came into the season and people kept saying, are you 100% ready to find love? And I kept saying, yeah, I am, I am, you know, and I actually thought I was Mm -hmm. being truthful. And then as I started like having feelings for some of the men, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I still, like, I still love John. And, um, that seemed like I couldn't exist. Both those things couldn't happen. I couldn't fall in love with somebody else and still love John. And, um, I actually had to go and have a, a session with the uh, psychiatrist. So Bachelor Nation provides a psychiatrist, um, at the mansion and for everybody that's on the show. And so I had a meeting with, uh, the site, there's two of them. I had a meeting with both of them actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, they said, you know, you should, you don't have to let go of John. They said, picture that you have a balloon in each hand. One is John and one is this person that you're developing feelings for. You don't have to let go of this balloon to hold on to this one. And that was like all I needed. I just needed Mm -hmm. to know that I didn't have to let, like John didn't have to be cleared out of my heart and my mind to let somebody else in. Like there's room for him and another person. And um, I really like that. Like that was, yeah, nothing else came out of the season. The fact that I got that kind of relief and that gift that I was, it's okay to be that way. Um, yep, that permission uh, that, you know, that was like the greatest thing mm-hmm. that can happen. And I keep sharing that story. So other people know that too, because it's like a really important thing for people to realize. Cause I don't know, I just didn't innately know that I didn't think it was possible. And then like, oh yeah, it's fine. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. It's so true. Cause you don't have a finite amount of love to give. Obviously you love your kids, you love your grandkids, you love your friends and you can have love for multiple people. Obviously it's different when it comes to romantic relationships, I'm sure. And I know you talked a little bit about the guilt that comes with that, but I guess if you were to Mm -hmm. give advice, you would tell people not to hold on to that guilt. Yeah, I definitely would. I think everybody has a chance to have another life. Nobody, you know, I think it's very important. It's just a matter of timing when you yourself are able to do it. And I think this is what Joan is now at, the ability to take another partner. It doesn't have to be the same as her first partner. It's just a a new phase. And that's, and it's very healthy, I think. I didn't feel guilty necessarily about dating. I felt like I was guilty that I wasn't honoring his memory. Like, you know, if you were really so in love, I like I had this vision or this thought in my mind, if I was so in love, how could I then fall in love again? Mm -hmm. And like, I had this guilt that, you know, people are going to doubt that I was really in love with John and I wasn't honoring his memory um, by wanting to have another love in my life. So I had to really work through those feelings. And, you know, the bottom line was John told me right before he passed away, like three days before he passed away, that he wanted me to find somebody else and he wanted me to be happy. And, and at the time I was like, don't talk like that. You're not going anywhere. And it took me a, like a year to realize like what a gift that was that he gave me because he gave me the ability to say, I don't have to feel guilty about this. He wanted, he wants me to be happy and he doesn't want me to mourn my whole life. 
We talk a lot about generational differences and finding love on our podcast. Have you noticed in this time around or with talking to your children any, I guess, differences of how love has changed over the years since years ago compared to now? Obviously, texting and dating apps and all of that, but I guess you you didn't have to go on the apps really much. No, we didn't have apps. We didn't even have cell phones as a matter of fact, so there <laughs> yeah, were no apps. Correct. Um, yeah, dating has changed. I really completely, um, and I'm not positive it's in a great way. So there was a time where I thought, oh, like texting is really unique and it's great because you can have conversations with people and you can have it like when it's good for you. You don't have to always be on your phone. You can have a conversation. You don't have to pick up a phone and talk to somebody when it's convenient for them, not necessarily convenient for you. But what I feel like I really noticed, and this was even my dating experience, not just my my kids is that you don't really develop a real relationship. Like you can be kind of a different person when you're texting. You can, you have time to think of the witty replies and you have a time, Mm -hmm. you have time to make your life seem maybe more interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. When you're face to face with somebody, you, you get way different things. You get the authentic them that doesn't have time to think about their answers, which is better, I think. And you also figure out if you have a chemistry and I don't think you can do that via text. Like somebody can be really witty and interesting and like a person you think you're falling in love with. And then you can, you know, walk into, uh, you know, a restaurant to meet them and find out that that was totally untrue. And you wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Well, so you're finding love in this journey, but you're also being filmed doing it. You're on a TV show. I think so many people are curious about if that impacted your experience to be vulnerable and how the age old question, I guess, of like, how much was it you choosing people on the one-on-ones versus the producers choosing it? And I guess, what was the intervention there? Yeah. So as far as the cameras, um, they, they kind of become like a white noise, like a background. They're around you all the time. And, you know, you're mic'd up from the time you get up kind of in the morning and, you know, they're catching, they want to catch the interactions between the men and, you know, each other and them and, and myself And it just becomes like you don't really notice them after a while. And that's kind of good because you let your guard down a little bit. I I think in the beginning, I was really careful, especially when I was on The Golden Bachelor, that I didn't want to be like depicted as being foolish or um, Mm -hmm. like not dignified in dating at this age. So I was a lot more careful. But then as like the time went on, that kind of I I knew that the producers and the that you know, had a pure, um, like they really wanted us to succeed and they didn't want to make us look foolish that like, they really wanted to make us this look good and give people hope and show people that dating at this age is fun and not undignified. So that kind of left my mind. And once I was relieved of that worry, I was a lot more open on camera and I really wasn't worried. I didn't think that they were, you know, there was going to be some way that they could make me look not like me. And as far as the dates, the one-on-one dates, um, we choose them completely. Uh, they tell us what the date is and, and we have an input even to what dates we would like. In fact, before the season even films, they asked me like, what kind of dates I would like to do. They asked me what kind of guy I would like. They asked me what kind of dates I would like to do. And then they just kind of arrange them and you get to pick who goes on them. Okay. That's great. Cause it, um, you would like that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I want someone to produce my dates for me. That sounds great. A helicopter way, ride? Way better than I ever thought. Yeah. They, I mean, they're epic. They're big. Like, I'd yeah. be like, oh, I'd like to go on a helicopter. Well, I went on a helicopter to a winery and like things are, they make it a, a lot of fun. What was your most fun date that you went on? Well, the most exciting. Yeah. Maybe different. Huh. I guess most exciting may have been the Las Vegas date where I got Mm -hmm. to go on a private jet. Well, first I drove my red Porsche Porsche convertible to the airport for our private jet that brought us to Las Vegas to a suite where they had racks of clothes for us to try on to wear to our date that night. And in the meantime, as we're just finishing trying on clothes, Wayne Newton comes in and serenades us. Yeah, so that was that was crazy. like a pretty <laughs> yeah that was a yeah crazy that date. was that that's, more, that's over the top. You're not having that, Kimberly. Yeah, fine. <laughs> that's not happening to you. <laughs> I do think what you're saying is interesting, though, because I feel like as a viewer, I loved watching the Golden Bachelor and Bachelorette much more. I mean, I love all of it, but then um, the I guess regular Bachelor and Bachelorette, and I think it is a little bit about now that I'm thinking about it, the approach of 
the way that they're making the show where I feel like they do really want y- you guys to look good because right. they want to give people That's silly and not. But I think like especially on Paradise and stuff like they do kind of make them they probably serve them a little much to drink or maybe it could be that when you're yeah. younger you yeah. make more mistake or like you aren't thinking as much about it. What do you think? Yeah. I, think I don't want to discuss those, <laughs> those shows with you, Kim, because I think half of them come off terribly, especially for the women. I'm not a lover of it. But in Joan's case, for the, these are more mature people that you're watching. And I find it much better. I find it much uh, less uh, uncomfortable for me because I see that, you know, they're smart. They all have careers. They've got most of them have families and they, they want to be respectful of each other. And I like that better. I mean, I'm not big on the, on mm-hmm. the uh, younger ones. I know you like that. Of course I do. Of course you do. <laughs> I, I still, I like watching the younger ones too. I love to watch, see what their outfits are. I like the places yeah. they go. I do feel like some of the interaction is really genuine and I like to see like how their love evolves or how their feelings evolve. I think it's really interesting. Um, I do think there is some drama and like, that's just, bound to happen generally. I mean, I'm very surprised it doesn't, it didn't happen even in the older houses, just because like in the golden series, because when you're living in a house with somebody and you're interacting in so many, you know, different mm-hmm. ways, like, in, you know, you get you, the group dates and then you're living together and you're sleeping and the guy next door, next jealousy door is and everything else, and lack of sleep. I'm surprised yeah. that people aren't getting a little more maybe irritated with each other, but I think you're right, you know, as an adult and, you know, you learn to, you know, push your feelings down if you're like getting a little aggravated and you have a lack of sleep and <laughs> you're tired of this guy that, that is going after the girl you like, you just kind of yeah. get over it. It doesn't really happen quite as well in the, you know, the younger bachelor and bachelorettes. Wait, so I was so curious because I loved speaking of the sleeping arrangements when all the guys were in the mansion and they were like fighting over. Well, I go to the bathroom 10 times in the night, <laughs> so I have to be through the door uh, near the door and all of that. I thought that was yeah, so funny. The bottom bunk. Oh my God, I know. Wasn't it hilarious? And the so snoring. did they actually have to stay together in, in those rooms or was that oh, like yeah. a bit? No, 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 no. We all sleep together. So that's so hard. Very, it's hilarious. And it's such a surprise. And now it's kind of out there in the world that this is how it works in that mansion. And I was in a room with three other people. I was on a top bunk and it's, mm-hmm. it's like, I was the youngest in the room. I was the youngest in the mansion. So I was mm-hmm. the youngest in the room. So I got the top bunk. And right. I remember, you could get up there. <laughs> like, it, it had a ladder. But I have this thing that when I wear high heels for like too many hours in a day, I get leg cramps. And so I'd be in the middle of the night jumping up and I would be in the top bunk and I'm trying to stand up. And actually that ceilings are really high. So I could stand up in the top oh. bunk and trying to get like the cramp out of my foot and my leg. And I, I remember like more than one time thinking, this is how I die. I'm going to fall off this <laughs> bunk in the morning with like my head cracked open. And I was like, this is how I go. Very few people die in a bunk bed. You could be the first. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that it would be terrible. It would be a terrible that scandal in Hollywood. Oh, my that gosh. Would be, that, that would increase ratings. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Oh. <laughs> that, that is so crazy because I feel like, especially even now in my late 20s, I'm like, I can't share a room. I'm not in college anymore. Especially years later, it's like, that. would you do it, Grandma? Grandma? No. <laughs> Grandma doesn't even like sharing a room with her husband. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you know, that's the truth. But I mean, but I, I think, I think this is, it makes very good television. It's fun. And uh, hopefully, you know, Joan will find somebody from the group, these group of very nice men mm-hmm. and be happy. And that's, yeah, the, I think everybody yeah. watching it wants you to be happy. I, that's the way I get the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not more, you know, sometimes there's a lot of backstabbing. This doesn't really seem to be that. And I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Have your kids taught you anything about love or relationships that you didn't expect that you kind of took into this process? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, so two of my daughters are married and then my oldest son has a fiance and my youngest son just moved in with his girlfriend. And I just Exciting. love like how fun they are together. Like they just mm-hmm. laugh and they have a really good time and like the joy, they love being together. And I, I'm not sure, like, I remember those days when, you know, John and I were younger um, and it kind of sometimes life takes over and you end up, you know, you're raising your kids and you're, you know, building careers and you kind of forget to just laugh with each other. And so maybe like, that's my biggest takeaway from my kids right now is that like, you 
can't forget to just have like a funny, goofy day sometimes and just belly laugh. That's so nice. And I assume they're happy with the end result. Uh, yeah, they sure. Are. Okay, good. Um, so sorry, we had our listener. <laughs> We had our listeners write in some dating questions, so I thought we could go through a few of them, a little quick round, um, and see what Grandma and Joan think about these. So the first one is, how do you deal with an invasive mother-in-law? Grandma, why don't you go first? Well, that, you know, I hear that all the time, Kim, from the questions that we get, uh, and several people have that. Uh, you know, I did not have that, and I think um, it's a blessing not to. I, I mean, some are just overly involved in their children's lives, and it can be very difficult for the the uh, for the for man as well as the woman. It, it can come from either side. So I, I really, um, I feel badly for it. I think you almost have to bite your tongue because it is your spouse's mother um, and uh, try to grit and bear it. And if it becomes terrible, I think you have to say something to your mate. Mm-hmm. Joan, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of agree the same thing. I actually have a wonderful mother and mother in law I'm still really close to. But I agree with you that, you know, you don't want to make the interaction for your mate difficult. So right. like if you are complaining about his or her mother and how they're driving you crazy, then it's going to put a strain on your relationship. And it's also going to put a strain on their relationship with their mother. So I think you have to be really careful the way you address mm-hmm. it. But if, like you said, if it becomes too hard. Um, if you like feel comfortable actually talking to your mate's mother. Um, I kind of feel like that would be the way to go and not involve him, but you have to do it in a really respectful way. Like, I love you. I love your son or I love your daughter. And I know we have many, many years together and I want them to be happy. I just have something that I I need to talk to you about Mm -hmm. that like bothers me and maybe we can talk it through. Just be like very, very, very careful. Yeah. Good, Joan. That's great. I like your answer better. (laughs) Okay. Second question, natural or lab created diamond? What are your thoughts? Well, I never knew. I have a natural diamond. (laughs) I don't know anymore. Uh, You know, I I don't think you can tell the difference. No, Uh, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, uh, uh, a difference. Um, I think for a first time ring, it should be a natural. I I think your love is natural and, and, and good. And I think no matter the size, I mean, I don't think it matters what size or shape. I think it should just be a token of love. Mm -hmm. So I would say go with the natural, but you know what, whatever floats your boat that that's up to the couple yeah joan what's neil diamond or not neil neil lane doing these days neil lane Lane with the diamond i I don't know if neil does the lab uh created diamonds i i feel the same way i think the natural ones because i think the, the special part of it is that it's not perfect and that it has like it's everyone has its own identity because it was created in nature and i like that about the diamond i don't necessarily would think like a perfect diamond would be something I would really want because everybody can have a perfect diamond if they're created in a lab. It's that Mm -hmm. they're not perfect and they were created in nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Last one. Do men ever really feel ready or old enough to have kids? 29 year old says he wants more time. Well, you know, what I feel about your generation is constantly everybody needs more time. I mean, if if you're in love with your your spouse, I'm gathering they're married, um, and they are financially able to have a family, I think a lot of it really in this day and age, you have to be able to provide. And if the two of you together can provide, there should be no reason. Uh, Some people are not emotionally ready and they're smart to say that to their uh, spouse. But I think that should be also discussed before you get married. Mm -hmm. You know, our children um, coming along quickly because it's not like when we got married at 20 or 18, 19, 20, we knew we were going to have children. That was part of the plan. We didn't have an IUD. We didn't. No, it wasn't even that. That was the way things worked uh, in our world uh, in America or wherever we were. So you had children, you had a family, and you you managed. But now, because both partners are usually working, it could be a little more difficult. And I think it has to be discussed prior to getting married. I, I agree. Definitely the discussion prior to getting married is really, really important. These days, I, though, I don't feel like 29 is very old. I think people are having yeah. kids much later in life. And um 
But the flip side to that is that, you know, you don't want to have them too late. Kids require mm -hmm. a lot of energy. And if you want to have more than one, you don't want to start too late or they end up with really old, like you don't want to be in your 40s mm -hmm. and sending them to kindergarten. Um, it requires energy. It requires a lot of attention. Um, but I do think that you don't want to rush it. If you don't think you're ready, right. uh, you know, it's going to change your life. It's going to be life changing. Yeah. And if you're not ready, then you know, you need to have that discussion, but I think it's only fair if you're not ready and your spouse is to actually kind of put a timeline to it because maybe your 29 is never going to feel ready and you right, need right, to have that right. conversation because maybe they're not the right person for you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, those things to really be discussed first. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Okay. We're going to end the episode with a game. Grandma Gail's old fashioned dating quiz. So this is rapid fire. Oh, yeah. um, and we're going to see if Joan is more traditional or modern when it comes to finding love. Okay. The first one is, would you rather receive a call or a text if it's just to say hi from your partner? Uh, probably a call. Would you sleep with someone on the first date? No. Dating apps or setups? Setups. Would you move in together before getting engaged or wait until you're engaged or married to live together? Move in before engaged. Should one person pay for the date or should you split, alternate? Huh. Like, I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like one person, I want to say one person, but then I don't, I'm not sure if that's always fair. So maybe split or alternate in the beginning and then figure out finances. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of depends on people's finances. Yeah, like, for sure. I would sure. never want a guy to pay for more than money than he did or whatever. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Do you think they should ask for parents' permission before getting engaged or is that outdated? No, ask for parents' permission or blessing, not permission. Yes, blessing. Right. And um, should you soft or hard launch the relationship, meaning should you post the person on your social media or should you keep them off social media until some sort of milestone like an engagement? Hmm. I feel like a committed dating relationship is a time to put it on social media. Yeah. Okay. All right, she's traditional. Which yeah, I knew definitely, Joan was definitely a bit more traditional. A little bit of modern in there, Joan. We'll have to, I'll have to work on you a little bit. <laughs> I was trying to be modern. I really wanted to say the modern answers, but I wanted to be like actually truthful. So I gave you my okay. truthful no, of answers. Course. Good. Good. <laughs> Joan, you are so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell everyone where they can follow you. Obviously, The Golden Bachelorette is still airing. Uh, anything yes. you want them to know? Um, no, but thank you for having me. This was really fun. And I have my mom, she's 92 and we play these kind of games all the time. And she <laughs> like, I, I, I need to get a podcast with her. I feel like you no, guys are so fun. Well, next time you're in New York, come with your mom. Cause we'll we would, do it together. We'll do it together. That would be great. We'd love well, that. The great thing about like the older you get is you like lose your filter and they'll say anything, which makes exactly. it so much more fun. <laughs> I love that. With your daughter, too, you've been doing like a little bit of quizzing each other on yeah. modern terms and stuff, which we do which all the time. <laughs> yeah. Makes me feel so old. Thank you yeah. so much again and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank much success. You.